Hi, welcome to this second video on a GUI-based approach to machine learning for sports betting. In this session, I'm going to take a look at uh, one-hot encoding, and I'm also going to look at a, an alternative metric to measuring the performance of a machine learning model. That's an alternative to actually profit and loss, which we looked at in the first video. Okay, let's get started. Let's open a file. I'm going to open the same file as I used in the first video which is handicaps from 2015 to 2017. Now I'm going to build a, a small simple model but one of the fields I'm interested in is in this sex field down here. I'm going to include that in the model but I've got a problem. If you remember from the first video the uh, I'm, I mentioned that Python can't process non-numeric data uh, in machine learning models and sex is an object, if you excuse the pun, and uh, that it means that the sex field is coded as a letter for each potential sex that the horse may be. So if a horse is a gelding, it'll have a G in that column. If it's a mare, it'll have an M. If it's a colt, it'll have a C, and so on. But we can't throw that at a machine learning algorithm and get it to actually process it. It needs to be a numeric form. And that's what one hot encoding can do and we'll probably best explain what's happening by actually doing some one hot encoded and seeing what it produces. Now I've got a, few, uh, a column here in this window which is called one hot and all the non-numeric fields have got square boxes next to them which means I can one hot encode them if I wanted to. So I'm going to, I'm going to one hot encode the sex field by clicking on one hot and then I'm going to go up here and click on one hot code and let's take a look at what's happened first of all you'll notice that the sex field has disappeared and it's been replaced with these uh, six fields one two three four five six seven fields in fact it replaced it with sex underscore C sex F sex G sex H sex M and sex R what it's done is created a, a completely new column for each possible value that sex can hold. And if the uh, sex of the animal in a particular row is a colt, then the sex underscore C field will have a 1 in it, and all the others will have a 0 in it. Similarly, if it's a gelding, there'll be a 1 in the sex underscore G field, but all the other fields, sex cult, sex C, sex F, sex H, they'll all have zeros in. Now if we look at the uh, sex underscore G field, we can see that there's around just under 80,000 geldings in this data set and just under 40,000 non-geldings. If we look at the horses, well, you can barely see how many horses there are. There are very few. Mares, just a few more, but mainly non-mares. And similarly with colts, there's only uh, a few colts, maybe a, a thousand or so. Okay, we've created uh, our one hot encode on sex. So now that these fields are all represented by noughts and ones, we can actually th put them into the uh, into the mix when we do a a machine learning model and create a model so let's see what we can do let's select let's go up here well let's let's clear all these selected boxes here and then let's include in our model the we'll go for the class of the race days since last run and then we'll put in the seven sex fields that we've just one hot encoded Okay, we're then going to create it using a gradient boosting algorithm. We've got the field set here correctly. Win lose is fin post field. The price is in the BFSB field, and the event ID is in the race ID. Is the race ID field, which you'll recall from the uh, first video. So now we're going to create the model. Click on create model. This will take uh, five or six seconds to load up before we can actually create the model.
Okay, we can just get a chance to double check here that the fields are the ones we want, which they are. Click on create model and uh, this will take about 15, 16 seconds to run through. It's going to actually now use the gradient boosting algorithm to create a model based on these fields. It's going to try and predict the FinPOS field. And if you remember from the first video, it's doing that using fivefold cross validation. Okay, here we go. This is pretty much the same as we saw in the first video. I'm not going to go over that again, but you can see that it gives a profit and loss breakdown, a variable profit and loss. It also gives you uh, a, a, a machine learning metric called the Brea Skill Score. And the Brea Skill Score, I'm, again, I'm not going to go over in detail here, but I will, at the in the comments section of this video, put a link to a blog post that I've written, which will explain how the Brea Skill Score is calculated and what it means. But essentially, if it's greater than naught, it means the model is, de is demonstrating some level of skill. If it's less than naught, then it's not demonstrating any skill and this particular model is demonstrating some level of skill because the Brea score is 0 0.0057 but I'll put an, uh, a link to the blog post for that and you can have a read through and get a feel for what the Brea score Brea skill score is all about it just gives you an extra machine learning metric to examine which allows you to perhaps compare algorithms or models that you've built with each other and to try and determine which model is the best. So it's an additional piece of information to your profit and loss information that you're getting up here. Okay, that's it for this session. Uh, by all means, leave comments if you've got suggestions or questions. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, perhaps do some more in the near future. Thank you.